Uh, good morning, and it's, it is my pleasure to, uh, to share some thoughts with you <clears throat> around this whole uh, customer focus versus customer service versus customer centric. Uh, and it's my honor to share some thoughts that really reflect a lot of work that uh, folks across UEP have, have been involved with in conversations with our corporate counterparts, uh, but also a lot of reflection of what, uh, what the whole customer piece means to us. Uh, had a great start to the morning, had a great customer moment this morning. Uh, my, my garbage guy was a little bit early and uh, he's halfway down the lane as I uh, go to position my black cart uh, and I uh, kind of gave him a wave and um, could see that he, I could see that he saw me and he, uh, he backs up his, whatever that thing is, that seven ton and uh, picks up my black cart and gives me a big hello and a wave and he says, no problem man. And, it was quite a heartwarming start to the to our customer service. Program. So Rob talked a little bit about uh, about about the world we're in, and and, and some of the why, uh, some of the why of our need to keep advancing our approach to uh, to our customers. Uh, I'm going to build on that a little bit, and also share. Uh, with you a framework on how we might do that, how we might make this shift to a much uh, stronger customer focused world. Uh, you're not going to hear any kind of new radical thoughts here. These are, these, this is all language that you've heard before. You, you'll recognize ideas of where we're doing well in our efforts both on customer service and customer focus and some opportunities, I'm sure some things will strike you as ideas where we could improve that as well. So let's get started. <clears throat> so slide here, uh, stats I'm sure you've seen many times before about uh, our performance in our citizen satisfaction survey. Uh, all great numbers and it's a great time to be in UEP. We score well corporately on all these initiatives. But I, I, I think um, as you do, I think I, I often wonder, you know, what's behind that? What, what, is it, what does that really mean? I know on the water one, you know, the question is actually are you satisfied with your drinking water quality? Um, so it's not necessarily a reflection of any kind of deep attachment necessarily to us as service providers. Um, some of them actually might take the question quite literally and say, yeah, we like the drinking water. Uh, so not a re perhaps not a really deep reflection on how attached they are to us or how, how, uh, how well they, they see us as customer focused providers. So at the end of the day, at the end of this morning, and I shouldn't be more than three or four hours here, um, <laughs> I, I'd like to build on the objectives that Nicole laid out for us. That we have a, a shared understanding of what customer focus means, an appreciation between the difference between customer service and customer focus, and, maybe, and perhaps an appreciation that we have a gap to fill, that there's some work that we have to do between this customer service and customer focus, and the fact that it will take us as leaders in this room to advance that approach and to close this gap. And I'm advancing this how. Oh, excellent. As Rob pointed out, uh, you know, our customers are looking for value. And I think you've all, I trust you've all seen this slide before. This is a, a slide that, uh, this is a framework that Jeff Fielding, our city manager, shares with us around the, the, relationship, the relationship between the, the Calgary community, uh, our city council, and us in administration. <clears throat> and the triangle depicts uh, council's role uh, on the bottom left and its, um, its role to ensure that it's, it's reflecting a vision with, uh, with, the, with the community at large. And the, uh, the bottom, the relationship between council and administration is, is, is to share a strategy on how that, that vision uh, will unfold. And of course, our relationship between the Calgary community and customers and citizens and civic administration. So our, our connection with the citizens at large, uh, w which is really reflected here as a, a bit of a transactional piece. Uh, we provide service, and you can think of all the services that we provide in this room. Uh, they return fees or taxes or utility rates. They return money back to us. And the expectation is that there's, there's, there's value in that. And we'll talk a little bit about, uh, about that in a little more detail. So this is, <clears throat> this is a slide that maybe some of you have seen before. It's just a, a simple representation of a relationship between customer value 
and how our actions relate to that, both through experience and price. It's, we, we use the word customer value a lot, but let me, let me kind of build on this. I want to spend a minute on this slide here. This, the relationship is really meant to highlight the fact that um, on the right-hand side of the equation, between experience and uh, price, we have a lot of ability to influence or control that piece of the equation. The experience I would offer to you is, is there a, a combination of the services that we provide and how the citizens or the customers uh, experience those services, both in uh, uh, the level of service and how it is they, uh, kind of what's, what's the attitude that they receive that in. And of course, the price uh, that it, it costs uh, that it, that that service provides. The important part for me in this equation is is the value. Um, we can influence it on, the, on our right hand efforts, but the value is owned by the customers. We we get to uh, th they get to determine if there's value or not. It's it, it it's their reflection of our efforts to deliver service and to keep price in in good shape and for their determination of whether there's real value in that. And let me give you a couple of examples, or let me give you an example of, I think, how, how that comes to life. It, it, it goes back to um, uh, the, the work that Waste Recycling did around the green cart. Uh, some early days on their efforts uh, during pilot program, did a lot of survey work asking uh, citizens about their uh, consideration of a green cart program and, and organic pickup. And there was, there was really strong support for it, um, upwards of over 90% uh, from the pilot program for citywide expansion. When, when they considered that there was a fee added to that, the, the support for it went, went down quite a bit, into the, into the 60s range. So uh, you know, a reflection of the fact that um, value is definitely a combination of what the service is and what the cost of that service is. Now I think, uh, going back to the slide we just hit on earlier around the citizen satisfaction survey, uh, I think the citizens have uh, definitely responded to the efforts around uh, blue card and black card. And, and as, as green card unfolds, I'm sure that 6% uh, approval will, will be something quite different. So again, so value is, is dependent on the relationship between what a customer is getting and what they have to give in order to get it. So keep that value, uh, that value picture in mind. The slide reflects kind of our current reality um, that we all live in <clears throat> as citizens in our society. I, th I think we all have experiences around what, what's going on and the efforts of other corporations to, to uh, create a customer experience. And these are just some examples. Everyone, uh, well, probably most everyone has been to a Starbucks and, and has felt the, the experience that they provide, the, the customization of your, of your drink, your uh, your grande, half-calf, light foam, frappuccino, uh, whatever it is that, <clears throat> that people are, are able to customize for themselves. And Starbucks has worked hard at, at making that, uh, that pricey drink a real experience. <laughs> Apple has done a great job of, of, making, um, of making complex products very simple to use. My, my mom can use an iPad, which, which is, is remarkable to me. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Amazon, uh, Amazon makes it incredibly easy to not just uh, um, search and select a product, but makes it incredibly uh, easy to get it to your door. So you, just a seamless operation on, on, um, on, on, product, on product selection and delivery. Open Table, for those folks that have used Open Table on their restaurant selection, an incredible powerful tool on uh, finding and booking um, a, a local restaurant. The point of the slide is that there's a lot going on around us. Uh, corporations are working hard at building customer experience. And, and we're feeling all that. We, we live that world, as, as do our customers, and customers bring those expectations with them. Now, there's, there's no chance, well, there, there's, some, there's a slim chance that we can meet all the expectations that these corporations build. But I think the point is that we need to be very mindful of what's happening around us and the, and the experiences that, that our customers are having and how that translates into expectations for us. So what do we do? 
you've heard the line, or you, you, I, you know, we've all talked about putting the customer at the heart of all of our planning, our processes, our systems. Uh, and I think that the recognition that customer focus is indeed so much more than, than just customer service. Customer service is truly, um, if, if, for us to keep in mind, it, it's truly a, a transactional piece of our, of our, of our work. Uh, but the experience is something quite personal. The, uh, I, I among, uh, along with other directors across the corporation, we, uh, we had a great session a little while ago where we uh, had some folks from Disney speak to us about, <clears throat> about their customer culture. And they, had, um, they talked about their purpose, their, their purpose about building uh, incredible family experiences uh, to the point where, where a family would always want to return to their theme parks. And, and they talk a lot about, they had a great line uh, around purpose trumps task, and they gave examples of, of their frontline service folks who um, um, have a task, you know, keeping the park clean, but if they saw that something was going awry with, with a family, uh, their purpose was to ensure that that family was on the right track to, uh, to their wonderful experience. I had, a great, I had a great experience recently that made me realize that, um, uh, that we have lots of this going on in our organization too. And, he, and here's one small example. I was talking to some, <clears throat> a group of brand new pipe men. They were just coming out of their pipe men class. And they were talking, and we, we got talking about the impact that they have at, at the front line of our business, uh, being so visible in, in the eyes of our public, of, of our customers. And they were talking about working in a cul-de-sac where they had the, uh, the cul-de-sac completely closed off to do a, uh, a service repair. And it was Waste and Recycling Day. And the recognition by the pipeman, uh, well, and, and his crew members, that uh, it was important that uh, they actually dragged the, the, uh, the black and blue carts out to the, to the, uh, to the, to the part where they, the, waste, the waste and recycling counterparts could actually uh, uh, load, the, uh, load the carts. But it never dawned on those, they, they, you know, they thought this is important, but um, you know, the recognition back to them about how important, the, the per, our purpose about ensuring that we're providing great value to our customers includes more than just fixing that service leak. It actually was ensuring that we're doing all that we can for our customers in that cul-de-sac and making a difference to them. This is a bit of a framework that I'd like to share with you in some detail about um, how we can strengthen our customer focus in UEP. And again, this is, this is a collection of some really uh, good thinking folks in our organization that, that have built this, uh, this framework for our consideration in, in four parts. It's around the information that, we, uh, that, that the customers are providing us that we need to be thoughtful about. Our processes from start to finish of everything we do, right uh, from our planning, delivery, uh, right down to our frontline service, the interdependence that we have collectively in making all that happen, and our attitude and our approach to that um, I represent the four pillars of how we might uh, advance our approach to customer focus. I'd, I'd suggest to you that all of these components have relevance whether your work connects directly to external customers or if you do work that enables customer experience uh, through others. Again, none of these ideas will be, uh, should, should sound unusual to you. We're, we're doing all these things uh, to some degree, uh, some of the time, and what we're really talking about today is being more thoughtful and more intentional about doing these things more often and building the culture around customer focus. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to this in, uh, <clears throat> in this order. So information around really listening to the voice of the customer. You've heard, you've heard that language before, the, the voice of the customer. I think my slide's out of date here. Um, it, it's really a reflection of, um, of how we are hearing what they're saying about the work that we're providing, making sure that we, we really take, pay attention to w what they're saying about us in all the different channels where we hear their voice. When you think about it, we hear, about, we hear from them in many ways, both at the front line, but also through 311, through, uh, through our website, what do they like and don't like. There's, there's a number of channels where we, we know what it is they're saying about the services that we're providing. It's about meaningful engagement, uh, about being prepared to meaningfully engage with our customers 
uh, once they've said what they've liked to, what they've said uh, is of importance to them, and taking time to understand their drivers and their objectives. And of course, uh, to act on those, making sure our solutions are relevant to their problems and to what they're uh, suggesting to us. I'll give you a couple of examples where this, this uh, to bring this to life, where, where, where it strikes me. Again, going back to the green cart pilot, there was a lot of work by Waste and Recycling to ensure that they really listened to their customers before, the, before they really solidified the approach to the green cart. And, and the voices they heard from their customers really drove them to cart size, to the needs of education that they wanted to hear from uh, through the whole uh, organics pickup program, and even to break down to the, the service frequency and how that affected other elements of black cart uh, delivery. So a lot of really thoughtful listing by Waste and Recycling in their efforts to, uh, to shape the green cart program. Another example is the, the corporate effort around the whole 311 service review program, pro project. I, I think some of you are aware that uh, the 311 system is undergoing major review as far as uh, milestones in a 311 journey, in, in a service report journey. Um, there was so many diff different definitions across the corporation of what done means in 311, and very few times was done what the customers or the citizens considered to be done, that the pothole was actually fixed, or the, mix, the mix, missed garbage pickup was actually picked up, or the service, the leaking service valve was actually fixed. We did a lot of SR closures that reflected our process and not really what reflected uh, what was done in the citizen's viewpoint. So that project is really uh, a reflection of listening to customers around what, what is done for them and shaping 301 uh, to respond accordingly. The second pillar is around <clears throat> process improvement. And I think this might be the, might be the key one for, for me. So it's really about viewing process improvement as, as a method to increase customer value. And the fact that continuous improvement can contribute to that. Uh, we are, you know, when you think about a lot of our internal processes, we are organized and configured to meet our needs and not necessarily the needs of, of our customers. Uh, let me give you a little more detail on this in, in our next slide as, as we kind of build this story. <clears throat> So this goes back to our customer satisfaction, and I think you know, a fraction of those great scores we get in the citizen satisfaction survey. And I, I offer to you again that this is, this is largely a reflection of our transactional piece of our business. I think our, our citizens and our customers recognize that we, we are pretty good at transaction. To support those frontline transactions and that frontline customer satisfaction, there's a lot of process going on in behind the scenes. And I know you can think about a lot of uh, process that you're involved with that is, is either a fairly straightforward process to support the front line or some very complex process. The interaction of those processes that support that front line activity uh, and how that translates into our customer service. The, the key part of the slide though is really about the process, all those internal processes and how um, a key effort of ours around providing customer focus to those processes will be something, uh, will, will be a kind of a, a new area of focus for us. And within that, within that focus to, to really ensure our, our, our processes are about our frontline customers, uh, we have the opportunity to <clears throat> add value. There's a lot of opportunity within those process reviews to ensure that we're adding more customer value. And that goes back to the equation that we talked about earlier. Let me give you a couple of examples to bring this to life as well. In the uh, Water Services Service Review, our, uh, the consultant that was involved, Scottish Water and National, continually reminded us of uh, our, um, they were polite about the words they used, but our shortcomings around customer journey. They, the example they used was, in our efforts to deliver sanitary service repair and how they thought our internal processes uh, deliver that repair were awfully complex. We, we made our customers kind of navigate uh, six or seven touch points before they realized the, the status of their, their sand service repair. And, and the opportunity they highlighted to us is you really need to focus on making that really easy for your customers to understand where they are in that process uh, in order to enhance their experience. 
I think the flood was maybe one of our best examples of where we uh, were so nimble in our process uh, in, in a time of crisis, in a time of experience for our customers. And when you think about what Waste and Recycling did around how quickly they re-engineered or reprocessed all their, uh, their pickup schedules and pickup strategies, uh, did it on a dime uh, in an effort to ensure that, uh, that, that, that we were making a difference during that period of time. Another example is the work that's underway right now. I think of what Water Resources and Water Services are doing with our roads counterpart uh, to ensure that the frontline service, both on road repair, but also in, uh, in uh, capital planning, and, uh, uh, is, is really about the customer, ensuring that what they see is a, is a seamless approach to service, rather than, a, than different business units um, that, they that the customers have to navigate. Third pillar is around interdependence and a recognition that, that we are all, the, the, the delivery at the front line can't happen without all of us working together uh, uh, behind the scenes and about, and about being very intentional about creating connections um, um, amongst us. We deliberately didn't uh, use the word collaboration here. Uh, collaboration, in my mind, feels um, optional or altruistic and interdependence is something that is not optional. We, we are truly organized in a way that requires us to operate together and to ensure that we have uh, the customers throughout all of our activities front and center as we, as we build our process. One example I would offer you of where we've done a good job of this, of recogni recognition of this interdependence is in our infrastructure investment programs, uh, both in, uh, in water and waste and recycling. I think everyone would, would recognize that throughout that process there's, there was a really big effort to work uh, col collaboratively, but a recognition of our independence that it's one capital program for our customers and it's about where can we provide the most value for them by working together through that process. It's been that, 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 that's been a struggle through that process, but I think we're making some great evolution on the, on the health of that progress. C clearly, I, I'm speaking about the water business, um, the way we're organized, we are truly an interdependent organization. Um, infrastructure planning needs to work carefully with, in, with infrastructure delivery on building a capital plan. And infrastructure delivery needs to work carefully with uh, all the operating divisions to ensure that what is built ultimately works for our customers. The bottom line is we will have a better, a better customer outcome if we strengthen our interconnections. And going back to the value equation, uh, increased interdependence will strengthen our customer experience. The last pillar I'll touch on is really about attitude, um, and it's really about our commitment as leaders in this room uh, to, uh, to serve our customers better. The other three pillars are really dependent on our commitment and our attitude to, to work together, to strengthen our process, to collect the information that we need, but to really make the commitment to, to, uh, to make that happen, and then the commitment to really put the customers at the heart of uh, of our, of our focus. I won't steal Kevin Colbrand's thunder, but I know Kevin will give us a great example of, of this. You know, the, the, the recent commitment that he and others uh, spoke to our, uh, spoke to a number of um, industrial customers and the, uh, the overstrength that they're, the overstrength challenge that they're providing to our Fish Creek uh, plant, um, I think is, is, is a good, you'll, you'll see a really good example here when Kevin speaks about our commitment to, uh, to really connect with our customers. So all in all, uh, we're talking about uh, these four pillars as a framework to strengthen our customer focus in UEP. Each of these pillars can help guide our journey to be customer focused. It's not a perfect recipe, but if we, uh, if we consider each of these areas, it'll give us an area of focus and intention. And keep in mind that we're not building a system here, we really are building a culture. We're really building a, a collection of behaviors and intentions to strengthen our, our focus on our customers. Customers, e cultures evolve based on the people involved, but this gives us a consistent foundation of understanding 
and I hope this uh, hope this gives you an idea of of the of the the relationship between customer service and customer focus and the value equation and how how we impact the value that our citizens uh, our citizens feel our world is changing we certainly can't stand stand still uh, as we highlighted what we're talking about today connects the work that we do and the work that we're already doing and again I think you'll see examples of where we're doing things quite well and some areas where we where we should consider improvement <clears throat>